God bless you. Thanks for clicking on this video. And I know that the Lord has specially prepared something hope filled and strength giving for you today. And now that you are here, please remember to like this video. And after you've liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. This way, you will get notified whenever we release new content here on this platform. And after you have subscribed to this channel, don't forget to share because I know you'll be blessed. And this season, the Lord will bless you beyond measure. In Jesus' name, let's see what we have today. you today captioned you can still recover hallelujah that is such a hope giving and um, strength giving word and we'll be taking our test from the book of judges chapter 16 verse 20 through 22 and it says then he called then she called rather Samson the Philistines are upon you he awoke from his sleep and thought I will go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. 21 says, Then the Philistines seized, seized him, gushed out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Finding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Hallelujah. I want to concentrate mainly on that particular last verse. It says, but the hair on his head began to grow again. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And I just want to read something in the line I just put down here. It says, although recovery takes time, but only a trial counts. The joy of rising again and totally receiving power to overcome those who thought you have ended is worth taking the pain to start all over again. Hallelujah. It is worth taking the pain to start all over again. And that story we read in our test is the story of the man, Samson. A very popular story of a great man who ended painfully. And um, he started out with God. A wonderful relationship of power, of greatness, of um, excellence. But um, he had his weaknesses. He had his feelings. He, he was disobedient. He was taking the relationship he had with God for granted. Yes, he was seeing the grace of God in his life or the mercies of God and the ways God had helped him. He, he took it for granted. He felt, ah, what's it for? And many times in our lives, if we can really tell ourselves the truth, and if you look into your life, you will see that one place, maybe in your marriage, maybe in your health, you feel that you have been healthy for so long. And, it's, it's my strength. I take, I, I, I follow the right things. I eat well. I, I rest well. I do my exercise. And then um, that's why I'm healthy. And maybe your marriage, oh, it's because I married this man. It's because I'm this. It's because I have this. And soon you begin to forget that that thing you have and whatever goodness you find there, it's actually because God has been helping you and is helping you. Maybe in your life as a young person, you have lived, you're living in a, a home where your parents are godly people. And then soon you begin to feel like, ah, they're taking too much. All those um, virtues and all this um, goodness of God in my life. What I can actually do without God a little. Let me try it the other way. Once in a while, let me do it this other way. Something was that kind of a man. He was taking God's love for granted. Taking God's grace for granted. And um, soon, you know, the enemy set him up. Yes, there's no child of God that is beyond the enemy's attack. The problem is, if the attack comes to pass or succeeds in your life, then you have to ask yourself a question, why did this thing actually happen? Because the word of God says, no weapon forged against you shall prosper. So if the weapon forged against you prospers, then it's something to ask yourself, why did it prosper? And if there is any way, that's what I want to tell you today. That is actually what my message is for. You have actually been beaten down by the enemy. If you noticed in that story, something was down now. Delilah had captured him. And um, he felt that, you know, he was always taking it for granted. You understand the grace of God. But something had happened in his life. He had actually lost the presence of God. 
the word of God said God had left him. May you never, I pray for you this season, my hearer, may you never come to the point that you will feel emptiness, feel loneliness, feel like you are not with God. Because if God's spirit that has been carrying you leaves, it's a very pitiable situation, a situation whereby the enemy can actually make a mockery of your, your, your calling. But this season, God's grace is available to you to restore you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, my message today says you can still recover. Now, recovery is painful like the first reading i made you understand you know starting again afresh after you have maybe experienced a poor situation in your life maybe you're in a down situation in your in your career everything has crumbled your business has crumbled maybe you're in that situation in your marriage your marriage is heading to the rocks maybe you're in that situation in your family whatever you're you're, you're a young person or you're you are addicted to drugs now, you're, this, you're, you're seeing yourself gradually degrading and losing value and you just can't help yourself. Somewhere, somehow, you are stuck in the sin that you feel like, ah, I'm too deep down in this. The enemy has actually captured you or made you feel like you are down and has caught you. And you feel like you are, actually, you are depressed. You are confused. And you feel like this is a hopeless situation. I want to let you know that no situation is so hopeless that God cannot pull you out of it. Hallelujah. Something was there too, but God restored him. Now let me tell you the first step to total recovery. The first step to total recovery is to not stop breathing. What I say, do not stop breathing. No matter what has happened in your life, do not give up. Do not stop fighting. So far you have breath inside of your nostrils. It is one step and one proof to show that God has not given up on you and if God has not given up on you who are you to give up on yourself don't stop breathing and reconcile with God God is only a prayer away hallelujah God is only a prayer away ask him for mercy no matter what you feel is happening in your life right now maybe you are you've gotten pregnant out of wedlock Maybe you are a young man and at this point in your life and you are so confused and you don't know what the next step to take. It is the right time that you begin to ask the Lord for mercy. Do not let the enemy lie to you that God cannot forgive you and that God is done with you. God is not done with you. God wants to help you. In that situation where Samson found himself, after the light had cut off the head, his head and the, the power of the presence of God, the power of God had left him. You know, the word of God said, when the enemy was rejoicing and feeling like, ah, we have our enemy now, the hair on his hair was actually growing again, although it takes a process for a restoration to happen. But if you can just stand still and hold on to God, God will actually restore you completely. And this season, the Lord will start up the process of recovery and total restoration in every area of your life where the enemy has stolen from you, where the enemy has beaten you down, where you feel the press or press this season, whether physically or spiritually, the Lord has recovered you and is out to recover you in the name of Jesus. Amen. This message is actually to tell you not to ever see giving up as an option. Fight for your life. Rise up from the mud, no matter what the, no matter what the mud is, no matter what the maybe you are in, in debt, maybe you are you are just at the, the, the you are just at the last point and you feel like ah what is the next step? Many people have resorted to suicide, others have just given up on life. No, don't give up in life. Just stand up, look up to Jesus, call out to him, and he's always there to help help you. And this season, he will help you in the name of Jesus. Just one word of prayer can turn that seemingly hopeless situation around. Yes, it can turn that mess into something that you never expected because God is still the God that works wonders. Hallelujah. I want to read a particular passage of scripture to you. Another one that will make you know that hope is always that there for you whenever you call out to Jesus. And let's see the book of Romans chapter 10 from verse 9. It says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. And I'm going to go down to verse 13. It says, For everyone 
who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. If you call on the name of the Lord Jesus, no matter what the situation may be in your life, you will be saved. The Lord will rescue you and deliver you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the next step to total recovery, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself no matter the mess you found yourself in. Yes. Even if it's a self-inflicted pain, maybe you, are, you got into drugs, you know, maybe you, are, you lived in immorality, and then right now, maybe you lost something very, very crucial in your life, and the enemy is actually lying to you and taunting you and um, questioning you, and you're feeling like, ah, it's over. Let me tell you, forgive yourself. The first step is to say, myself, I forgive you. I can actually start again. Accept God's forgiveness. Now, I read that scripture to you. It is your duty to say, God, you said you have forgiven me. Because the word of God says that if you call on him, he will save you. And now God has already saved you. Because the moment you call, he's always there to hear you. And he said, Lord, forgive me. The Lord has actually looked upon you with mercy. It is your duty to say, Lord, I accept your mercy. Don't start beating down on yourself again. Don't do what the enemy wants to do to you. Don't support the enemy in defeating yourself. Pick yourself up. Ignore the devil's lie. You are not finished. Hallelujah. You cannot be finished if you are still breathing. <laughs> if you still have breath in you, then you are not finished. Don't concentrate on the enemy. Shift your gaze from the enemy. And concentrate on your recovery. You know, some people are so funny. They're like, ah, this person did this to me. This person hurt me. Maybe your spouse hurt you or left. You know, work out on the marriage or something. Um, I want to let you know that you have to concentrate on your recovery. That, because that is the main thing. The best revenge in life is success. Once you succeed, you know, you, you're not even going to... The person, the person who hurt you will return to you. And let me tell you, whatever negative thing, I said this in one of all of my videos, whatever people do to you that is painful, they did it because they know that it will hurt you. And they actually plan to make you feel bad. And you can't help them to still put yourself down. So it is wise. The best option is for you to rise up, pick yourself up, and continue fighting. Is it your ministry? Fight for your ministry. Is it your family? Fight for your family. Fight for your marriage. Fight for your child. Fight for your life. You can still recover. It is not over. Hallelujah. Yes, forgive also whoever has hurt you. Remove your gaze from them and continue to look to God who is able to deliver you. And he will deliver you this thing in the name of Jesus. Even if it's demonic oppression, you know, whatever thing the enemy does in your life, it's actually because something was is missing. And if there's something that's missing this season, God will work towards it to correct it. If you lived disobedience or acted in disobedience, it's high time you ask the Lord for mercy and return to Jesus. And if it's maybe you took God for granted one way or the other and you trusted in your own strength, this high time you still look to Jesus and ask him to have mercy on you and reconcile with him and he will receive you in the name of Jesus. And also there's something I want you to know. You may be going through a situation in your life and you have looked around and you feel that there is nothing you have done that is wrong. And that the enemy is actually troubling you or causing you pain. Just like he was causing it in the life of Job. I want to let you know that God knows what he's doing. Just keep your hope standing. Don't give up this season. And I want to let you know that the window of grace is always open for you. And no matter how down, no matter how depressed, no matter how oppressed, no matter how deep in the mud of sin you are today, grab this window of grace. Jump into it. Jesus is always there to rescue you. And as you look, lift your eyes to him this season, he will deliver you in the name of Jesus. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up this child of yours before you. I pray that you perfect the wonderful process of recovery you already started in, this, in the life of this child of God in the name of Jesus. And wherever this child of God has missed it, I pray that you will start this wonderful work all over again. And you will give this child of God grace to keep fighting and not to give up in the name of Jesus. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I cover your life with the blood of Jesus. Your home with the blood of Jesus. All that you do with the blood of Jesus. I cover the peace of God will keep you in the name of Jesus. I want to hear from you. And I know that you have been blessed. And the Lord will consider all that concerns you in Jesus' blessed name. Amen.